This week on CrossFeed. Anti-Muslim video games. Religious bias in the workplace. Looks like Jesus is God after all. Rome silences Mary. And would you believe Jesus and Superman sitting in a tree? Welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I am Pastor Jim Butler, Pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, proud father of three soldiers. <laughs> cool. Well, I just got back from an unexpected uh, trip. Well, not completely unexpected, but I wasn't expecting to do it tonight. Two of all places, and some people can probably guess this one, the vet. <laughs> Our guinea pig is hospitalized again. This is so frustrating. <laughs> Take the guinea pig, dig a hole in the backyard, put the guinea pig in the hole, cover the hole. Take care of guinea pig problems. Much cheaper. Buy new guinea pig. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things. I, I, the vet kind of asked me tonight because it's probably going to be a few days that he's in there again. And she said, well, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know, here's the thing. I've got to be able to look my kids in the eye and say we did everything we could to save them. And if we don't do everything we can to save them, they will, I mean, they will be heard about that for the rest of their lives. This one especially. I mean, he's he's the favorite out of the three because he's the nicest and and he's he's always been uh, pretty gentle and stuff. And ironically, he was the biggest. They're they're from they're all from the same litter, and um, he's the, he was the biggest of the three. How about we did everything within my budget to save him? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quickly getting to that point, but you know, <laughs> you know, you know, we you know we, we can take we can deduct human medical bills off our taxes. We cannot deduct guinea pig medical bills off our taxes. Yeah, unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover it either. <laughs> so no, they, hey, vet bills seem expensive. Yeah, well, there's such a thing as pet insurance, though. Yeah, I know, but we have a pre-existing condition. <laughs> You still have your health. So, <clears throat> do you hear this, Obama and McCain? We need pet insurance. Yeah, there you go. Universal Come on, pet insurance, <laughs> government paid and subsidized. <laughs> yeah, that's just where I, what I want my extra taxes to be, need to be raised to pay for. We can raise it. Triple taxes on all senators and congressmen to pay for it. Now that I like. You think they'd vote for that? You know. No, but no. <laughs> no, no. Oh. You just tell them to share the wealth. Share the wealth. Yeah, isn't that a? Right. Isn't that from the the life? Let them know we vote for the board them. game. I did not know that. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, where should we start? I, I, I'm trying to think of a good segue from guinea pig to, um, um, and and uh, you know, universal pet care to one of our stories. I can't think of one. Uh, I don't know. I suppose we could try praying to Mary. Praying, praying to Mary. Okay, let's deal with Mary here. Um. We've got a, a woman in Baltimore. Her name is Gianna Sullivan. And she has, since 1993, um, been having visions of Mary. This is madness. And she's been telling people about these visions of Mary. And the uh, Archdiocese of Baltimore said, knock it off. 
Stop it! Stop this! This hideous facade! Uh, well, I mean, you've got to kind of figure, you know, it kind of makes sense. I mean, this is one of her, um, you know, vet messages from Mary. After a while, you'll see a time when there's another body in orbit around your solar system coming between Earth and the sun, leading to tremendous devastation. Approximately 60 to 70 percent of the world's population, as you know, it will cease. Of those who survive, 60 percent of them could die of starvation. Um, you know, I think we know the nine planets. There's, you know, not a, another one unless, unless we, well, whatever. I still count Pluto. I'm sorry. Well, see, I like to say no, ten because I, I was registered to vote by Acorn. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, they, they make up all voters. They can make up all uh, planets. But anyway. <laughs> Hey, you know, if Mickey Mouse can be signed up to vote, Pluto can be a planet, okay? You know, but anyway, um, unless unless she's, you know, hinting. I'm going to get real political here. I've been reading too much stuff. Um, <laughs> I, unless she, you know, Mary is talking about a comet coming in, which could, you know, cause the destruction. Like the hail bop? Right. She been, you know, eating the pudding. I'm not crazy. Maybe that's why she's having Perfect visions. Cool, like. Depending what's in, depending what's in it, you know, what was in the sugar cube, you dissolved into your Kool Aid. <laughs> that's right. But anyway, uh, so, uh, but it, you know, it says she, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, complied so far and has, you know, suspended her monthly appearances. And pledge not to, you know, distribute these things anymore. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I mean, you, you, okay. Once again, though, you, from a theological viewpoint, you're, you're dealing with this fact that you're dealing with a, a denomination that takes part of its teaching outside of Scripture, because tradition is the same. Uh, and so now, how can you really, you know? You know, how do you how can you say, well, this person is not getting authentic messages? Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I still haven't figured out how they determined that the Lord's visions were um actually were real. Or, you know, we've talked about some other ones. What you know, there was the the ones in France. Or no, that was Lourdes. Anyway. Um you know, the the Guadalupe and but like what what is, how do you how do you determine this? I'm, I'm just <laughs> I'm picturing. I don't know. Well, said, uh, in 2003, the Vatican supported an investigative commission's conclusion that the apparitions were not supernatural. Yeah, you know, I don't know what kind of you know testing and research they did about that. EKG meter. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? The Vatican. <laughs> Ghostbusters. I just I picture the Pope walking around with a <laughs> proton accelerator on his back. <laughs> Getting out of the old station wagon. <laughs> well, no, you know, he's got a... He's got a, a, a <laughs> he's a picture that equipment on the Pope mobile. <laughs> Little Ghostbuster sign on the Pope Mobile. <laughs> oh man, now we're gonna get nasty comments on YouTube from the Catholics. <laughs> I I talk about Jerry Kishnick, but it's not as funny, you know. I'm sorry, you know. Just just I didn't I didn't salt our own our own leader, but you know that it, it, it'd be such inside jokes, people wouldn't get it. So you know, but. Uh, it, but you know, I, I, you know, uh, um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, on the other hand, I, you know, these visions are leading her to do good things. It says that she and her husband founded a nonprofit organization that provides health care to the poor and uninsured in Maryland, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Texas. 
Yeah, that's a you know not a bad thing at all by any means. Yeah, gee, maybe she should but, talk to uh, the um, candidates. <laughs> but uh, you know, but I just don't know too much about the, getting these visions. It always scares me whenever somebody says, you know, God told me, or you know, I had this vision. You know, um, well now we're adding to scripture. We're adding to, um, you know, what God has revealed to us. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to be a little, you know, I mean, now the Bible technically is an open canon. Theoretically, um, more could be added. There's nowhere does it say this is it. Because the stuff at the end of Revelation um, that, that says, you know, if anything is added to this book, uh, you know, the same number of curses will be added to them or whatever. You know, that was specifically referring to the book of Revelation. So not to the Bible, because the Bible was not compiled at that point yet. So, um, you know, technically, still at the same time, we do need, yeah, still we need to be very careful about adding to Scripture, taking away from it. Well, right. In order and, to consider know, any other revelation needs to be, you know, guided by the revelation that God has given. Mm-hmm. And in this case, we can go back to, good, to the Book of Deuteronomy, and God said, you know, look, here's the deal: if the prophet says something and it happens, then you know I've sent that prophet. If it doesn't happen, then you know I haven't sent that prophet. So I guess one of the questions we'd have to do is look at it, look at some of her other, you know, things she's predicted or said would happen, and did they take place? Mm-hmm. But it's even more interesting, of course, because it's not saying God said this or an angel said this, it's Mary said this. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas in, you know, Scripture, mm-hmm. consistently, whenever the prophet speaks, always, this says the Lord, thus says the Lord, here declares the Lord. This is what God says. Yeah. And there's also uh, prohibitions on speaking to the dead. Mm-hmm. So, well, although I suppose... We'll get shot at by the, the Roman Catholics, won't we? Well, you know, you could argue that Jesus spoke with... Uh, um, well, Elijah doesn't count. He never died, but he spoke to um, um, uh, uh, Moses. Moses. Um, I, I I think that that would be a stretch. Lazarus too. He died. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said Lazarus, come out of there. I guess my only question is that you know, Mother Mary tell her, let it be. Um. Um. If if it was the Mother Mary that the song is actually about, then I could understand her having visions. And uh, sure, but you know, I just wondered, you know, let it be. Oh my goodness! Uh, well, let's go from from there to something probably a little bit more biblical. And this particular little story, I thought this was absolutely fascinating. I'd never heard about this before. Neither did I. And um, I, I have to put, I, I think this is really cool, and I think we can talk about it. But I think that we also need to put a caveat on it. I tried to find more information on this and couldn't find it. That doesn't mean it's not out there. I just Googled and I couldn't find any more information on this. So, um, and, and I didn't spend very long looking for it. Uh, so, you know, it, I may have just used the wrong keywords or something like that, but, um, what, what I would say here is that, um, you know, you want to, we're going to talk about this, assuming it's true, um, assuming this is authentic, but, uh, you know, before you uh, use this as some sort of, uh, um, uh, basis of apologetics or something like that, you want to double check it. So, but anyway, uh, so now assuming it's, it's true. true. Yeah, it's a mosaic that was found, and it's to be the... Uh, and you can see the, the, the writing there. Uh, the guy's writing next to it, there on the ground. Uh, it's from what is considered to be a very, what, you know, looks like to be a very early Christian church. Uh, and, you know, mentions a benefactor named Gaianus, who is a Victorian, mentions a woman called a Pactus, who offered a table memorial of, of, uh, of the God, Jesus Christ. And what makes it interesting is that here, this is from probably late first century, late second century, um, 
around the year 230, something like you know, 230 like or century, earlier. Early, third century, 230 or earlier. Right, 2.30 or earlier, um, and here are evidences that, you know, is, you know, they're worshiping Jesus as divine. And a lot of people want to say, well, if you remember the Da Vinci Code, well, they didn't figure out Jesus was divine before Constantine in the Council of Nicaea, but here, which is in 325, but here, something that's over 100 years earlier, there are signs that Jesus is, um, you know, was already considered divine. See, I don't get that. I mean, you know, St. Paul said in him the fullness of the deity dwelt bodily. And um and uh you have um 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 um, um oh where he says that uh if they had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Right? Obviously that's a divine reference. And so I don't understand where these people are coming from that say, well, you know, there's the Christians didn't consider Jesus divine until the fourth century. It just, I mean, it's it's all over the Bible and and really clear too. So I just don't get that. I mean, even even in uh, you know, you've got uh, Thomas saying, "My Lord and my God," to Jesus at the resurrection. You know, with the whole doubting Thomas story. So. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't get where they get this, uh, you know, that they thought that Jesus was just some guy or, or you know, the prophet or whatever until later on. Because, you know, the Bible was all written during the first century. Are you incapable of restraining yourself? Or, I mean, New Testament, obviously. Or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? Yeah, but, you know, some people still want to say that that was... Uh... Um, you know, he, uh, um, you know, want to, want to say it was, it was a late church invention, but no, apparently it was believed very early on and, you know, shown. Now, what, what my favorite part is about this thing personally was, I thought the, the mosaic itself was cool, but the fact that they have trouble finding it and people have trouble seeing it because it's inside the grounds of a maximum security prison. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know that's the thing with with Israel. Israel's kind of like Greece, that every time you turn around, you're uncovering some historical f- site, and um, and you know, archaeologists because tourism uh, in both of those countries is predominantly because of its archaeology. Um, you know, you got to really be careful. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of like. Uh, it's kind of like being in Wisconsin, and every time you turn around, something's being declared a wetland. You know, if there's a cattail growing there, oh, it's a wetland, it's protected, you can't develop on it or anything like that. And all of a sudden, this property is, you know, kind of useless to whoever owns the land. You can't, you know, bulldoze it or anything. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, the, you know, the, <laughs> you got this prison, but then like, oh, we found something here. In Greece, it's theaters. Every time you you turn around, there's another theater that's been found, so... Um, never dig in your backyard, or it might be declared a historical site. <laughs> you can't hide from them. Well, except, of course, Greece is the word. But anyway, uh, I've heard, uh, I read someone once that whenever, uh, uh, we must have a little bit of a delay tonight. Yeah, we do. Uh, he just caught that joke. Uh, but, um, um, that whenever, uh, um, whenever they do any construction in Israel, they always have a, uh, a certified archaeologist on the ground, just in case something does get dug up, uh, because you know that's how they found uh, uh, some ossuaries one time. Uh, a couple of years ago, they found um, the the Pool of Siloam. And they dug that up, and they were digging, putting a new sewer line. Uh, so a lot of things do get dig up over there when they, you know, are doing construction projects. I'm just, just sitting underneath the soil. Picturing the um, angel coming and stirring the sewer and then somebody diving in to be healed. <laughs> <laughs> so in Israel, does it go clockwise or counterclockwise? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, no, fascinating story. Yeah. Uh, again, it doesn't prove anything. You know, I mean, Scripture is self-authenticating. 
but it's interesting to see how outside of Scripture consistently there is evidence of Jesus and his miracles and his divinity and that people believe that very early on. Yeah. Um, you got some of these, you know, uh, classical critics back in the 17th, back in the 18th, 19th century, and they did want to say, you know, you know, these guys never understood this. Uh, people didn't believe it. You know, it, 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 uh, it, you know, grew and was, you know, added to slowly and, but no, we just the opposite. We see that Jesus was considered divine very, very early on uh, by Christians. Yep. It also notes, uh, says, indi- evidence indicates that this prayer hall served a Gentile congregation, showing just how quickly the Christian faith moved from becoming a Jewish, se- a Jewish sect to a truly international faith, which shouldn't surprise us because, like, um, there were, um, well, Paul was basically the missionary to the Gentiles. You know, and, and there's lots of Gentiles mentioned already in the New Testament. Uh, so that's not a, a big surprise. But once again, um, supports what the Bible says. Um, it also says that um, other inscriptions underline something else we already see in the New Testament. Women were prominent benefactors of early Christianity. You know, and we've talked about that just recently, uh, Luke and and other things like that. Um, that, yeah, the Bible very much um, elevates women. So, yeah, it's, you know, this is cool. It's the, it's a TV series. Uh, it's and be women on. did make up a large point, a part of the, the, the Christian church. In Australia. So I might be interested in the DVD once it comes out. Yeah, there's always but, BitTorrent. Uh, Sydney, England. Not though, that I'm recommending so, that. Unfortunately, He is, just as the one to admit it. So, uh, well, let's go to meatpacking. Now, this is interesting. This is this is uh, uh, a religious from from the Wall Street Journal. Little problem that they're having now uh, with um, uh, Muslims in really kind of the workplace because uh, this is mostly a Muslim thing. Uh, as reading um, and uh, dealing with the EEOC, but. That there's a lot of issues about, uh, you know, religious bias going on, particularly against Muslims. Uh, <clears throat> and specifically uh, in meatpacking uh, plants for some reason. Yeah. Um, but it's, well, uh, but it's going on other places too. I can, I, I, I know that for a fact. But how do you, um, accommodate a group of people in, who need to religiously stop uh, uh, a couple times during the workday to pray. Yeah. No, it's one thing to give them breaks, but we're talking about union shops here. And, um, and so you've got, uh, that what they want, you know, the unionist has worked out this deal with the, um, plants that they can have a certain number of breaks and they're kind of split up to make sure that the workers don't have to work too long, uh, at a stretch. And, um, you know, which especially in a place like a meatpacking plant where you're, um, you know, you're wielding these sharp knives, cutting pieces of meat up or cutting off fat or, you know, or whatever. And, um, but then the, one of the times that Muslims need to pray is at sunset. Well, what time is that? Well, depends on the time of year. And so to have this sort of floating time and, you know, the other problem is, is with these, um, with the plant that they're talking about here, um, one of them specifically, it has um, about a fourth of the employees are Muslim. So you can't just have a fourth of the employees in the plant go and spend five minutes in prayer because you'd have to bring the entire factory to a halt. You just can't have that many people take off all at once. You're fooling yourself. We're living in a dictatorship, a self-perpetuating autocracy in which the working classes... Oh, there you go, bringing class into it again. That's what it's all about. Um, my dad, by the way, used to work at a meat backing plant at one time. So uh, I do have a little bit of familiarity with that kind of work from my dad. So um, can you tell me about what it could be like? Yeah, you're right. Um, or what do you do about holidays? Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, you, um, I mean, I guess during Ramadan, uh, the Muslims all work third shift because, you know, they're, you're supposed to, 
you know, fast and pray and everything from sun up to sun down. So I guess, you know, they all have to go on third shift there for a month and uh, do the overnight, do, do the hoot owl, uh, so that they, um, uh, can't do that or, you know, what if it's another religious day? Um, uh, so the close of, of Ramadan, they're supposed to have a day off and some other days you're supposed to take a, uh, a, a day off. And one of them, you know, they, they worked it out that, okay, tell you what, uh, we'll switch, uh, uh, Labor Day. You can get, you know, the, the, your, this religious holiday off El Fatir or what, what day was that? Yeah, I had uh, El Fatir. The end of Ramadan. Yeah. Okay. You can have that day off. Uh, but you'll work Labor Day. And, you know, others complain, that's, that's un-American. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, you know, uh, you know, Labor Day is kind of a recent holiday, I think, in American history. I'm not even sure how old it is. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's necessarily un-American to say, you know, I'll, you know, I thought that was almost insulting to, to tell them, you know, you're not being really American by working Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, I know lots of um, soldiers who I consider pretty American. You know, you can't get much more American than being an American soldier. And uh, they work Labor Day. <laughs> I bet your kids don't get off on Labor Day. You homo sapiens and your guns. And... Um then the other one we have, uh, uh, but it's just not Muslims. It's also some other ones. For example, in Las Vegas, they had a situation of uh, um, a Jewish police officer. Was he permitted to wear a yarmulke um, when he was working? And uh, they said, well, they would allow him to have a beard, which others were not permitted to have. But uh, they have a you know strict policy against nothing on the head except your hat. Therefore, he could not wear a yarmulke. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, these are tough calls. There's another one with, uh, uh, um, uh, or was it? It was, uh, Seventh-day Adventist who wanted Saturdays off. Um, and in that case it was, yeah, here we go. Um, as very last paragraph, a few mm -hmm. years ago, local 22 lobbied to allow a Seventh-day Adventist at another meatpacking plant to take Saturdays off as demanded by his religion, the union lost. Yeah, so he couldn't get it off. You know, I think part of this, I think that people have to, um, when they take a job and they know what the hours are going to be, that you kind of have to say, it's it's one thing to, to request, you know, certain times off, but you know what? You also got to be realistic, right? For I mean, we we certainly can't have all Christians um, that work uh, for hospitals or um, you know law enforcement or whatever else where you know they need people working twenty four seven. You know, if all the Christians ask for Sunday morning off, and and were you know the hospitals and and uh, police departments and stuff were compelled to give it to them, boy, that would create a real problem. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, yeah, at the same time, you got you, you you do have to deal with a problem because you know uh, you can't tailor everything to individuals. You got to have general rules, and so it's like this one meat packing plant. Uh, you had this group of Somalis walk off the job because they, you know, they were Muslim and saying they weren't being respected. And their religion wasn't being respected, and uh, you know the non-Muslims, mostly Latinos. Uh, who are would probably Roman Catholic are very upset and going, you know, well, why don't we get the same, you know, thing? Yeah, yeah, we don't get the enunciation yeah. off, you know. <laughs> right. So you, you, you know, you're trying to. It's that wonderful question: What's fair? I mean, you want to try to be sensitive. You want to try to address the needs, but realize, the reality is, you know, that's we can only do so much. Make accommodations. Can't accommodate everybody and everything. Right. Yeah, and unfortunately, in a lot of these situations, people really, you know, in, in these situations, you got to look at it from the employer's point of view, too. You know, they're doing what they can, but you can't just shut down the plant five times a day. Right. And, you know, there, there's some things, you know, uh, you know, a Somali woman cleaned and supervisor kicked her while she was praying. Um, 
you know, and uh supervisor said he didn't see her and he kicked the cardboard she was sitting on, you know, didn't didn't notice her there. Um who knows? You yeah, know, that's that's one of those stories yeah. you just you can't prove one way or the other. So uh I I appreciate though. I do appreciate the fact that some of these places are trying to be are are sensitive to the situation and trying to be accommodating. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh You'll, you'll hear me say that a couple other times tonight. Some of these stories, uh, I appreciate the fact people are being sensitive and trying to accommodate and trying to, to work. Um, especially when we see the one that, uh, was not. Uh, <clears throat> but with this in mind, actually, we have a video game where, uh, you know, you know, once again, dealing with uh, a group of Muslims, um, uh, I, I've never played, I don't play game, video games anyway, so, uh, this is from Sony's Little Big Planet. Yep. Hotly and, anticipated um, game. Has been, hotly anticipated been game. hearing about it a lot, um, and it's, uh, PS3 exclusive, which, um, you know, most, uh, if, if you're buying a video game system for your family, uh, you're buying a Wii from Nintendo. And uh, because the PS3 just really doesn't have much in the way of family-friendly video games, or the the family-friendly video games that it does have, you can also get them on the... Uh, actually, ironically, a lot of them are still being produced for the PlayStation 2. So, um, so this is really the first um, that I can think of um, sort of PS3-exclusive title that's specifically geared toward families. Or uh, I think it's a single player game, but well, sort of because you can share content. Um, it's not like uh, the whole family can play at the same time. But um, anyway, so you know, Sony's really counting on this thing and really counting on making a bunch of money and and hopefully selling. You know, this is going to be one of their big uh, holiday uh, items. You can probably expect to see uh, in the next month or so uh, some big ads for this game start popping up to get people to buy PS3s for their kids for Christmas and um, and this game to go along with it. <laughs> um, but there was a problem. Houston, we have a problem. And that was that there is a song in it, in the background music, that contains two expressions from the Quran, and uh, produced by a Grammy-winning uh, West African musician, who uh, Tumani Diabete probably yeah. just mis- misspelled that, m- mispronounced that name, but and she sings and uh, plays a West African string instrument called the kora, and uh, but there are some expressions from the Quran in there, and the Sunnis. Uh, <laughs> Uh, especially strict Sunnis, it's, uh, instrumental music is a, uh, no-no, and especially instrumental music where you add in the Quran. Yeah. So, yeah, instrumental music by itself, they would just, you know, avoid it or whatever. Just don't play the game. Um, or, well, pretty much don't play any video games because, uh, most video games have some kind of music in them. Um, and, and usually it's not a cappella chant. But, um, the, yeah, when, once you take instrumental music, which they consider anathema, and mix the Quran um, references with it, so it's just this particular group of Muslims because the this artist who uh, performs the song is Muslim, and you know it was so uh, you know I could see other people being offended that it contains Muslim music in it, you know, and uh, you know it, it, well it doesn't have any Christian music in it. You know, but no, in this case, they're pulling it not because of that, but because, oh, it, it's actually going to offend this particular group of Muslims. Maybe they're afraid they'll be killed. You know, the goofy thing here is that, like, okay, what if, I mean, there have been Christian artists who have done uh, background music for songs. Now, I mean, we we had a story on CrossFeed a while back about a um, a company that, they just had a, a game come out not too long ago. It's it's sort of like a Guitar Hero game, but it's all uh, uh, contemporary Christian music. And um, in fact, we have it sitting in our living room right now. I haven't opened the box yet, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but uh, we um, 
there's a a you know there's there's Christian games out there, and there have also been Christian artists who have done uh, music for uh, sort of non Christian games. Um, pretty sure Switchfoot, who's a Christian artist, and Reliant K, they're also Christian, um, have have done songs for uh, different games that I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, you know there has been quasi Christian music. They're, you know, sort of Christian bands, but the song's not really explicitly Christian. Um, but they've been included in games. Um, and there may have been, you know, I, the none that I'm aware of anyway, that was explicitly Christian. Um, but you know, it's, this is just kind of interesting that it's being pulled, um, because they don't want to offend anybody. And I'm thinking, you know what? There's plenty of games out there that are going to be offensive to Muslims. I mean, you know, you think about all these these games where they are, um, you know, uh, prostitution and scantily clad women and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, that's going to be offensive to Muslims, too. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just that this one is only going to be offensive to Muslims where, you know, the other ones are offensive to um, <laughs> most people of, you know, just about any religious faith. <laughs> So, yep. But again, I do appreciate the fact that they saw this as a problem, and they decided let's be sensitive and you know deal with it rather than, as opposed to the Museum of Art in Argentina. I oh, see. Now, some of you may find this picture extremely offensive. I know <laughs> I do. Yeah. But so. I was amazed at how many I knew. Now, a hat tip to this story, by the way. I got this from um, uh, Comic Book Resources, uh, Rich Johnson's uh, blog that he does on there called uh, Once a Week, a uh, column he does on there once a week called Lying in the Gutters. And uh, I thought, oh, man, we got to put this one. And I knew it was going to be popular. I was amazed that it's gotten over 90 reads, you know, close to 100 reads already. You know, I think some people are going, this really can't be true. Yeah, this, this can't be. But there is a photo montage of this, this uh, museum in Argentina, and it contains this picture of Jesus kissing Superman. Yeah, but it's going to offend a whole lot of people. Because it's going to offend and, Christians uh, and Superman fans and, you know, of course, we've also... And those of us who are both. Yes. <laughs> and, well, you know, and we've also talked on other episodes about Superman being a... Um, a Christ figure too, so you know it's almost like kissing your clone, um, which is really pretty twisted. Yeah, um, but it's but you look at this picture. I mean, it is just so offensive. Of course, it won the it won some prestigious art award. Don't they you know, always knew it had to? Yeah, I mean, you know, with this picture, he he almost you know it's almost like he's got to win. You know, because who else would do something this offensive? You know, something this offensive has got to win. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, I mean, the, yeah. The only way he get, you know, like if if he didn't win an award for this, he could have like thrown feces at it or something like that, and then he would have won for sure. You know. Right. I mean, it's just this this this, this perverse, you know, thing. You know, I mean, and, and a Catholic lawyer in uh, if you go to CrossFit News and look the story up, the the the, the, the story is in art in uh, Spain. That you you know have to run through one of you know like Google translation tools or Babblefish or something like that in order to to get it. But a Catholic lawyer, I can't remember the lawyer's name now, uh, you know, asked them to take it down. Um, um, and um, you know, this museum just flatly refused. Now you know, now I don't know what version of Argentina has a, a First Amendment. Okay, but whatever the the version is, you know, apparently they have every right to put it up there. I'm not arguing that. But man, this is just offensive. This is just disgusting. Yeah. Um, and I, if you want to show true art, if you want to show true expression, tell you what, buddy, take out Jesus, put in Muhammad, and let's show some real. Um, yeah. Let's let's watch a uh, art museum burn. <laughs> That's right. Let's see what will happen. Um, now, the artist uh, whose name is uh, Moro Guzman. And um, 
he says, um, the, it's not designed to, um, I'm, I'm working with the translation here. Um, my Spanish is pretty much non-existent. Uh, throw something at me in uh, some dead language like, you know, ancient Greek or Hebrew and that I could probably handle, but, um, <laughs> you know, modern languages, forget it. Um, but, uh, he says, uh, imagine Christ and Superman as two related powers in society. Um, the two are related to what masculine and, um, power, but also are two beings with a lot of loneliness. There's no female figure who occupies that role. The intention was to think of a love story to save them from that loneliness to which they were convicted. It is not a loving sexual encounter. Um, he said it's designed from the fiction and based on the idea of comic. Which I, th I think something's being lost in the translation there. Um, but, you know, he's just saying, oh, there's these two lonely figures and... Um, I don't know. I'm thinking that Superman had his lowest lane, and Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Mary Magdalene, <laughs> or you know, I mean, Jesus has the church, so um, is his bride. Right. So there. Yeah. Couldn't even stand to see it anymore. I just considered it just um, that uh, awful and offensive. And oh. you know, at the same time, you know, it does raise the whole question of freedom of expression and and all that kind of stuff, and what should be allowed and what shouldn't be, and and stuff like that. And I mean, no, I, I, I'm 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 almost a free expression absolutist. I really am. I'm, I'm you know. Um, you know, I'm, I can almost be libertarian on that viewpoint. Um, that I, I'm not going to, you know, argue that. But let's just be honest. You know, you wouldn't do this with any other religious figure. You know, the Christians aren't going to go out there and, and start attack you. Um, you know, you, you know, whatever else he's trying to. You could have done a lot of things to make your point without having. Um, you know, uh, a homoerotic picture. Right. Yeah. This that's, is, that, that's, and, you know, no, we're, of course we're by featuring this story, we are, uh, sort of playing into his, uh, his goal, which was basically to get a whole bunch of publicity. I mean, this is a publicity stunt. Um, and congratulations, you got us, you know, um, but yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> a lot of the stuff is publicity stunts. <laughs> Yeah, um, but you know, it's still at the same time. It, 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 I think it's a story that's important for us, and we do need to cover it. Um, and uh, you know, ask about, you know, uh, you know. I think it's very interesting. You had the meatpacker guys being very sensitive to the Muslims and and their worshiping. Uh, you had Sony being very sensitive to this 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 you know song with Quran phrases in it in a video game and and de delayed this major launch in order to, to correct it. Yeah, this is gonna cost a lot of money. The I games were already in stores. Yeah, you know, this is, you know, but, it, and, and that's, you know, versus this. You know, it's just, you know, as much in your face to insult you as you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. You know, so just kind of see a different action, different uh, uh, time there and everything else. Maybe you have some questions, comments. Uh, maybe you have some thoughts. <laughs> Uh, maybe you like to read Rich Johnson's Lying in the Gutters as much as I do um, over there, comic book resources. Maybe you've got some stories. You know, one of the things is, you know, it was interesting coming off that, that blog, you know, I, that column, I happened to find the story. I never, I don't think we would have heard of it otherwise. Um, you know, so, you know, number one, if you have any comments, please. Uh, if you're on YouTube, just go ahead and make a click or something, and wherever it is, put the comment, we'll get it. You can always write to us at... Um, podcast at crossfeednews.com and send us your uh, your comments. We haven't gotten any comments for a while no. through that, so I'd love to get some email. Or please go to crossfeednews.com and post stories. You know, maybe you've come across something that that, that that's interest. Um, you know, it'd be nice to to have input and in other stories that that we can look at. Um, 
Yeah, Dale and I put most of them up there, but uh, I'm amazed at how many of them get read. I, you know, this week is the first time I really looked at that and how many, you know, uh, 90, 75, 90, 100, you know, reads on some of these stories. People really do go to our, our site and check it out quite often. Yeah. And, um, you know, the other thing is that if, if some, if you see something happening, like some local news story or, or something that happens, you know, it could be something in your neighborhood, something that, um, something really unique that your church is doing or, you know, or, or whatever. Um, you know, write up your own story if it's not, if it hasn't been covered anywhere else. You know, there's the option to do that too. There's web links you can submit or you can submit a story. And so, um, you can, you know, you can write up your own story. It's a good chance to, uh, if you got something really unique you want to share that, you know, that relates to this, hey, put it up there. We might even cover it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we do, or, and, uh, especially, you know, if... Might even interview you and ask you to be on the show. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I've, we've talked about that, actually, lots of times, wanting to get some guests on here to, mm-hmm. to talk about the show, and it's just never really worked out. But, um, yeah, we'd, yeah, we'd love to do that sometime. Had one guy, he kept saying he was going to, and kept backing out on me. But anyway, we pray that you have a very good weekend and uh, enjoy yourself this uh, uh, last weekend of uh, October before we go into blustery, you know, there's a poem I once said, read. It said, no sun, no moon, no sky, November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Alright, good night everybody, God bless.